Hey, happy Friday, everybody. I hope uh, y'all have had a wonderful week and are uh, getting a lot of stuff done, getting ready for spring. You know, the uh, snowstorm we had the other day was definitely the wettest snow we've had in a minute, and that's typically indicative of warmer weathers right around the corner. So, uh, you know, starting to uh, get your indoor seedlings ready and things like that is probably a good idea. Um, today, guys, I'm going to be uh, talking about spray timing um, and kind of what goes into each one of those. Uh, basically, spray timing is a very broad term, but uh, I'm going to go over like duration. So like how long should it take? Uh, order? Uh, you know, how should you apply your chemistry so that each application is uh, complementary? Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome, man. Uh, anybody I can help, you know, just send them my way and I'll, I'll definitely make sure that they get the, the knowledge they need. Um, also, interval, how often should you apply those chemistries, you know, the time of day, uh, how to maximize your chemistry's capabilities and your productivity, and then uh, REI, how to minimize your downtime and maximize productivity. So the first thing I'm going to kind of cover is uh, duration in terms of spray timing. I, I get this question a lot. You know, people ask me, how long should it take me to spray a garden? And the correct answer, guys, is as long as it takes. There is no quantifiable way to say you should be spraying, you know, for 30 minutes, one hour, what have you. Every garden is unique. Every canopy is different. And depending on the situation that you're in, it might take you an hour. It might take you three hours. So, you know, the, the answer to how long should my spray take me is as long as it takes you to do it correctly. You know, make sure that you're getting thorough coverage and that, uh, you know, you're not missing any spots because, when you're, you know, on the attack, so to speak, you want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to get the efficacy out of your efforts. Um, an order of, uh, you know, spraying in terms of like how to complement your last spray and your next spray with the spray you're doing today. And so what I want, uh, you know, most growers to think about is if I'm going to be applying, you know, a growth regulant, for example, an insecticide, that is, you know, possibly a fungal-based insecticide, like a, a myco-insecticide, like BioSeries WP, and something like Xeritol. Well, what's the correct order to do that in so that you maximize the effectiveness out of those products? The way that I would recommend doing something like that is, you know, making sure that you've got your, uh, how do I put it, like the jab and the one-two combo. you got to make sure you're doing your jab first. And so, you know, knowing that the Bavaria is going to be, you know, the heavy hitter in this situation, we would probably want a tank mix that has a garden zero altogether so that you are, you know, basically taking away the insect's food source, uh, messing with their ability to grow, messing with their ability to lay eggs, and sanitizing your canopy, and then putting out your entomopathogenic fungus to target those insects. Because if you were to, uh, you know use the Xeritol in the wrong order, like for example, you tank mix the Xeritol and Bio Series, mm -hmm. now you've canceled out both products, you're not going to get efficacy out of either one, and so, you know, knowing the order in which to apply those is going to give you the maximum benefit. Always try to, you know, look at active ingredients and how the product is going to work in the garden, and then make sure that you're not going to be, you know, just canceling it out with that next application so to speak so you know don't run biologicals and then sanitizers do it the other way around try to sanitize and then inhibit or inoculate and you'll get better efficacy out of your product um you know spray intervals it is going to be dependent on uh you know two key mm -hmm. factors your target situation and the product that you're applying some products have you know very low residual you know, contact and efficacy in the canopy. Um, something like Xeritol is a very high level, but short-lived disinfectant. So an interval for Xeritol, depending on your situation, could be as often as every three to five days until you get control of the situation. Or it could be as, you know, less often as like, you know, bi-weekly, depending on if you're just doing maintenance versus, you know, curative applications. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, basically knowing the severity of your situation is going to dictate the interval. And uh, basically also uh, what products you're going to put into play and make sure that, again, you're playing chemistry off of itself and that you're not uh, canceling out one spray by doing another. So, you know, having the uh, 
ability to do like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday application in a veg scenario, in my opinion, is going to give you the best possible scenario in terms of covering all your bases so that nothing finds its way into your veg. Um, and, you know, rotating different chemistries on those three days so that you're, you know, adhering to those seven to 10 day intervals for those products. Um, a question that I get asked a lot, guys, is what time of day should I spray at? And uh, I have a lot of growers that try to spray at the end of the day just because, you know, it's kind of the last thing on the, the list and they want to make sure that they get it done. But, you know, if we think about how, you know, mildew grows, for example, if we're trying to combat powdery mildew, spraying right before the lights go off could actually be more of a detriment than a benefit to us because we are uh, creating a conducive environment for that mildew to be able to grow. Um, some of you have heard me talk about the, uh, the triangle of infection, where at the top we have to have a susceptible host followed by a conducive environment and a pest. When that you know, exists like that, that's how it's able to sustain itself and perpetuate the infection. If we can remove that conducive environment portion of the pyramid, then we are going to you know, make our host less susceptible and our pest or pathogen uh, weaker at that point. And so, you know, for example, if we're spraying for mold or mildew, we want to do it early in the day, as early as we possibly can, because of the fact that uh, you are, uh, you know, basically trying to play off the dry down period of the day. It's drier during the day. You know, your plants are going to have the sunlight or, you know, artificial light over them. They've got good airflow going on. They're transpiring. It's, uh, you know, more of a, it's not a, you know, stagnant environment at that point. Whereas at night, a lot of times, you know, some fans don't run, the humidity is going to spike. And if we're trying to combat a pathogen that grows in a damp, dark environment, the worst thing we could do is, you know, boost that relative humidity up right before the lights go off. Because if there's any surface area that's not sanitized properly and mist, we're just going to perpetuate that infection that much more. So, you know, spraying early in the day is going to give you that leg up and be able to treat uh, you know, that infection properly. Um, I also recommend spraying early in the day for most chemistries for insects because just like us, when we wake up early in the morning, that's when they're going to be the most active. And when they're moving around and doing their thing, that's when we're going to be able to make contact with those insects, get efficacy out of our chemistries and be able to, you know, solve our situation. Whereas if we spray right as the lights go off, those insects are already, you know, kind of going to bed. They're going to be in their cracks and crevices. And if you miss one, You've missed them all. Um, the one caveat to that scenario is there are some products, uh, some mycoinsecticides, that do well in high humidity. So in order for them to get the best longevity out of the product, you want to you know, hit it as close to that dark cycle as possible without causing detriment to the plant so that you can play off that humidity curve that happens when the night cycle kicks in anyway. Um, really, that's the only scenario where I would recommend applying that pro or, you know, those products in that fashion because you're, you know, again, trying to play off that conducive environment quotient for your pathogen to be able to attack the pest because at that point, you know, the, the game is flipped on them. The plant is no longer the susceptible host. We're going after the insect at that point. And so, you know, trying to create that conducive environment for those insecticides really allows you to, you know, get a leg up on that. But really, that's the only scenario where you would want to spray that at the end of the day. Uh, which leads us into the last portion of spray timing, guys. REIs, or re-entry intervals. How do you maximize, you know, downtime, or uh, minimize downtime and maximize productivity? Uh, you know, a lot of growers, again, will spray at the end of the day because they don't want to not be able to go into a room for X amount of hours. And, you know, depending on the size of your crew, um, what I really recommend is trying to have people be able to work in the cleanest environments first, treat those, and as they move, you, you know, kind of follow them, so to speak, and you do your sprays as the, you know, veg crew, flower crew, whoever has finished up in said room. But uh, treating during the day is going to give you a better benefit. And one awesome thing about our chemistries here at Biosafe Systems is we have, you know, minimal REIs on most of our products. Uh, something like Sanidate or Xeritol, one hour REI allows you to treat a room, go to lunch, come back and keep working. So that's a minimal loss of productivity with, you know, an EPA registered chemistry that's very high level and is going to get the job done for you. Um, but, you know, basically trying to, uh, you know, coordinate so that your sprays are going to be, 
you know, in sync with the, you know, rest of the crew. It definitely takes some work, guys, but it is possible. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the questions here now. Uh, I apologize. I was uh, reading them, but I just wanted to get through the spiel before I answered them. Uh, Royal Strains is saying he's seeing phytotoxicity with lights on spraying Xeritol. Uh, what I recommend when you guys are spraying is like, let's say there's three rows of lights. You're going to spray this row first. So you turn this row off, spray this row, turn this row off, spray this row. By the time you get to this row and turn this one off, you can turn this one back on. So you're never spraying in the dark. I don't necessarily mean spray under the lights, but don't spray in the dark because you're going to miss something. Spraying under green lights is admirable, but it's not efficable. People that do that are in a perpetual situation where they're never able to fully get everything because you can't see everything under green lights. It's just not as user friendly. So, you know, making sure that the light directly above the row that's being treated is off is going to be to your benefit. But again, if you're still in that same room and you've moved two rows over, chances are this first row is probably going to be dry enough to, at that point where you can flip it on at least every other light and be able to see in that environment a lot better than you would, uh, you know, the headlamp or a green light, so to speak. Um, OG by the OZ. I hope that answered your question as well, sir. Um, he's saying never spray with the lights on. You know, brother, that's, that is uh, to each their own. Uh, there's different recipes for chili. If you have the ability to hang some fluorescence in there and spray under those, you know, that would be better than nothing. But again, you want to make sure that you're trying to capitalize on that daytime period, man, because that's when everything is going to be active. That's when you're going to make contact with stuff. That's when your dry on is going to be the best for mildew. It's just the best approach you could possibly take. I, I'm only telling you that through experience, sir. Uh, River City Growers is saying... We use the green clean acid in our commercial facility to flush fertigation systems in between runs. It's a fan fantastic, consistent product. I appreciate that, River City. Do you uh, follow up with the Sanidate shock afterwards to make sure you get everything out? Um, that's what we recommend, doing the green clean acid for a one to two hour period, one to 100. Let that sit in the system. The sulfuric acid and surfactant blend works like sandpaper, creates a lot more surface area on those deposits. And when you follow up with that Sanidate, it's got way more... Uh, for lack of a better description, surface area to permeate into and break those deposits loose so that you're getting as close to, you know, new material as you possibly can. Uh, lots of growers have been on the, the program and they definitely have saved a lot of plastic and landfills by reusing their irrigation stuff, which is what we want you guys to be doing. Uh, Royal Strains is saying, do I have a biosafe class? Um, not Really? I mean, I've got a PowerPoint presentation that I can give to your crew if uh, you'd be interested. I could do it over a Teams meeting. Uh, DM the main Biosafe account, and we'll see if we can get that set up for you, man. Um, but I, I would be more than happy to talk to your crew and go over all of our products and how they're used for you guys. Uh, are there any other questions today? I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. It's supposed to be warm, at least here in Colorado. So try to get outside and enjoy it a little bit. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, hit the Biosafe DM. Hit my DM at ZachTheGrowGuy underscore Biosafe and we'll get you taken care of. I really appreciate everybody, uh, you know, coming in week and again, week, <coughs> sorry, time and time again, week after week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. If uh, there's anything I can do in the meantime, don't hesitate to hit me up. See you all next time.